AQA A Level Physics, and this is video number seven in my exciting series of videos, turning points videos. And this one is about photoelectricity. Uh, it's actually in the core syllabus anyway, and doesn't actually go very much beyond that, but we'll talk about it. It all ties in. So now, before 1905, um, the current theory of electromagnetic waves. Uh, people thought that they were continuous, like water waves. Uh, and if a wave had more energy, then that was maybe something to do with its amplitude, like a, a water wave. If a water wave has got more energy, it has a bigger amplitude. Uh, and light waves were a bit like that. But now we know different, don't we? Yes, the photoelectric effect. Now, people had known about the photoelectric effect from uh, 1887, and it was actually Hertz. Do you know Heinrich Hertz and frequency and radio waves and stuff? Uh, and he discovered the photoelectric effect. And basically, you've got metal, and when radiation, electromagnetic radiation, falls on the metal, then the electrons gain energy and they escape. They become photoelectrons. However, the electrons will only escape if they gain enough energy uh, and they need a certain amount of energy to escape, which is called the work function, which is a, a property of the metal, the work function of the metal. Now, the current wave theory at the time would have predicted that the electrons would be able to escape if the radiation was intense enough. In other words, maybe if it was bright enough, it was a very, very, very bright light, the electrons would be able to escape. If it was dim, they wouldn't. Uh, or if they had enough time to absorb the energy. However, that's what the theory would have predicted, but it didn't work. It turned out that there was one factor which determined whether the electrons could escape or not, and that was the frequency of the radiation. Experiments showed that whether a mission took place or not from a particular metal just depended on the frequency of the radiation, not on its intensity, not on for how long the metal was exposed, uh, and this couldn't be explained. Okay, when this is actually demonstrated in the class, what you do is you do it with a piece of zinc uh, and with normal light, with a very, very bright visible light, source it, it nothing happens but with ultraviolet it does even if it's very very dim ultraviolet the electrons gain enough energy and it's all to do with the frequency of the radiation so who explained it well we've had lots of ideas haven't we i mean nobody works totally on their own uh, and einstein like everybody else builds on the work of other people and he built on the work of Planck and Planck talked about energy in atoms and energy of photons being discrete. And Albert Einstein suggested that we need a new model of electromagnetic radiation, for example, light. And he said that light isn't a continuous wave, but lots and lots of discrete packets of energy, which later on somebody else called photons. Yes. And the energy of these packets, the energy of each packet, was proportional to the frequency of the radiation. If you had more intense radiation, that just means that there were more photons. But each photon only had a certain amount of energy. And one photon gives its energy to one electron. And if that electron escapes or not, just depends on the energy of that photon, which depends on its frequency. Yes, emission occurs if an individual photon gives sufficient energy to an individual electron. It's all little packets of energy. In other words, the energy of the photons is quantized. Yes, what would the difference between red light and blue light be? Well, blue light, we're talking a higher frequency, we're talking a smaller wavelength, so blue light photons have more energy than red light photons. Ultraviolet photons would be lots of energy. Each little packet of energy would be a lot of energy. Obviously built on Planck's ideas about electromagnetic radiation. 
and this is the equation which you actually need for the for the core specification Einstein's photoelectric equation uh, he did lots of amazing things he had a, an amazing year he published four very very influential four groundbreaking papers and one of them was to do with this and in 1922 I think he got the Nobel Prize for Physics for uh, explaining the photoelectric effect and basically HF is the energy of the photon uh, equals psi which is the work function of the metal uh, plus the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron it is uh, the the electron may not be exactly at the surface you may need a little bit of energy to actually get to the surface and so we're talking the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron and that's Einstein's photoelectric equation <laughs>